Hello Year 4 and this is Friday the 22nd of January and this is your reading lesson. So what, we, what I explained, what we are doing is we are keeping a reading journal. So each reading lesson you are going to listen to a few chapters, two or three chapters and try and make some notes on what has happened in that chapter and then any thoughts or questions or predictions. Okay, so this is what we looked at on Wednesday and we want to try and keep all our notes together in a reading journal. Um, so today we're going to look at, chap we're going to listen to chapter 2, chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay, so listen carefully. Obviously you can pause the video if you want to note things down and then restart it again. So it gives you a chance to write anything down in case you forget. So it's just so we can have an idea of what's happened throughout the book. So, so far, just a quick recap. Fintan Fedora is a very clumsy person and he doesn't appear too bright. And his dad, he thought he was going to take over his dad's business, his biscuit business. But he has decided that Fintan isn't good enough, isn't clever enough, makes too many mistakes, so he's decided to let his older brother and sister take over. And they don't seem to be very nice to Finton either. So Finton, he wants to show his dad that he can do it. Okay, so... Chapter 2. Meanwhile, approximately 40 miles south of Fedora Hall, and to the left of it, Mrs Edith Bumstead was cooking tea for her horrible, spotty, overweight son, Eric. Ignoring the cigarette ash she was dropping into her saucepan of baked beans, she scraped the burnt and blackened contents out onto a slice of stale white bread. Beans on bread, said Eric indignantly. Couldn't we at least have toast? This is just bread. It's like a uh, raw toast. His mother flicked her stinky brown cigarette into the huge pile of washing up and wiped her hands on her cardigan. It's not my fault the toaster's conked out. It hasn't worked properly since you put that beef burger in it, she yelled. <laughs> Eric ignored this and pulled a stupid face, which was quite easy with a face like his. But I'm fed up to the back teeth with beans mum why can't we have some proper food mrs bumstead sat at the table next to her son and adopted a sad voice and a matching face because we don't have much money eric things have been difficult since your dear father passed away god rest his soul he didn't pass away mum shouted eric he's in prison i've known that for years so you can stop pretending Anyway, you're fat enough as it is, hollered Mrs. Bumstead, changing the subject as quickly as she could. You spend all your time lying about on the sofa, watching the telly. If you could be bothered to go out and get a job, maybe we could afford something a bit more interesting to eat. Eric had recently left school with no qualifications, no prospects and no friends. The only thing he had to show for all his years in education was a large box of chalk, stolen from the station recovered, and several catering sized tins of beans stolen from the school kitchen since then he hadn't worked a single day his mother thrust the newspaper in his face open at the job advertisements eric's attention however was drawn to a large picture on the opposite page beneath the headline millionaire cake tycoon to retire was a full colour photograph of sir philbert fedora and a long article of his life and successful business empire it was the word millionaire that had attracted Eric's attention. Eagerly, he traced a finger through the paragraphs beneath, mumbling the words out loud as he did so. It appeared that the Fedora family was one of the richest in England. It also appeared there was a 14-year-old son who was the perfect target for kidnapping. A big grin spread across Eric's fat, bean-juice-spattered face. I've had a brilliant idea, he, he announced. Right, so that was chapter two. So we're introduced to a new character there, aren't we? Eric Bumstead. 
and his not very nice mum. So, chapter three. I've just had a brilliant idea, shouted Finton, emerging from behind a copy of Young Adventurer magazine. I know how to impress my father and make millions of pounds for fedora fancies at the same time. Really, sir? And how, may I ask, might you achieve such a thing? With the great Brazilian chuck a plum. That's how Gribbly. Gribbly raised his eyebrows. Vinton thought he'd better explain. It's the rarest fruit of the, in the entire world, Gribbly. And according to the lucky few who have ever tasted one, it's the most delicious too. But surely, sir, there's no such thing as the great Brazilian choco plum. I pride myself on having a wide knowledge of the world's exotic foodstuffs. And I'm afraid I've never heard of it. Finton smiled and waved his magazine. Ah, yes, well, some say it's just a myth. A story passed down by generations of amazing Amazon Indians. But not according to this article in Young Adventurer magazine. Look, there are reports of a small group of great Brazilian choco plum trees being discovered deep in the rainforest. Gribbly didn't look convinced. In fact, he looked extremely unconvinced. This sounded like yet another one of Finton's silly ideas. And over the 14 years he had been employed in the Fedora household, there had been rather a lot of them. Gribbly was reminded of the time Finton had read that article on the science of alchemy and the week they had spent in the garden shed attempting to make gold out of cat food and washing up liquid. The experiments had only been abandoned when several hungry cats invaded the shed, attacked them both and ate the test materials. It had taken a further week to clean up the mess as cats aren't very good at digesting washing up liquid. Ooh. Gribbly wished Finton wouldn't read these types of magazines. They tended to fill his head full of dangerous ideas and adventurous nonsense. Any idea where Brazil is, Gribbly? asked Finton, excitedly spinning his illuminated globe. Is it anywhere near France? Twenty minutes later, armed with his big boy's atlas of the world, his diary, and the Brazilian Chocker Plum article, carefully bookmarked in his Young Adventurer magazine, Finton proudly presented his expedition idea to his parents. There was a moment's shock silence after he finished speaking. His mother who had no idea what to say, looked pleadingly at his father. A splendid idea, announced Sir Philbert eventually, much to everyone's surprise. Finton could hardly believe his ears. Really, he said, do you mean that? Certainly, my boy, lied his father, through a big false grin. A bit of an adventure, splendid, I'm sure it will do you the power of good. He didn't actually mean this for a second, of course. In fact, he was pretty sure Finton would find it difficult to get out of Fedora Hall without getting lost or forgetting where he was going, let alone make it to Brazil. What he actually thought, thought was that this was a far better idea than letting Finton anywhere near the family business. If he was off wandering around on the other side of the world, he would be out of harm's way. He could be someone else's problem for a while. Gribbly will have to accompany you, of course, he added. Brilliant, shouted Finton. I'll go and start planning the expedition right away. For some reason, Gribbly didn't look quite so excited by this turn of events. In fact, he looked completely stunned. Having to accompany young Finton, the walking disaster area, on a foolish trip to the Amazon rainforest wasn't his idea of fun at all. It didn't bear thinking about. Finton could barely contain his excitement. A real expedition, proper explorer stuff. Just what he'd always dreamed of. I reckon the trip will take us about a month, Gribbs, he declared, already scribbling his ideas down on a piece of paper. So we're going to need to pack quite a lot of provisions. Any idea how many peanut butter sandwiches will need to last a month? Gribbly closed his eyes and let out a slight whimper. Oh dear, poor Gribbly. So you can see there that... Finton's dad just wants Finton out of the way so he can concentrate on his business, whereas Finton is going on this expedition in search of the Brazilian Choco Plum. That reminds me of another story, actually, um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know, when Willy Wonka talks about the Umpa Lumpas and where he found them. So a little similarity to another book there. 
Okay, let's see what happens. Chapter 4. Binton and Gribbley weren't the only ones making travel plans. Eric and Edith Bumstead were at that very moment studying a tatty old map of England, trying to locate the little village where Fedora Hall stood. It didn't help that neither of them were particularly good at reading and that Mrs Bumstead couldn't see much without her glasses. There it is, look, shouted Eric triumphantly, triumphantly, stabbing his finger at a small black square in the middle of the North Sea. No, wait, that's an oil rig. Can't be that then. Remind me, said his mother, who was having trouble keeping up. What are we supposed to be doing again? Eric rolled his eyes impatiently. I've told you twice already, Mum. We're going to kidnap that fedora boy and demand a ransom from his rich parents. It's simple. We just need to find where they live. Kidnap him, eh? said Edith, rubbing her chin and suddenly sounding very interest interested. And they're really rich, are they? How much do you think we could get for him in ransom money? At least a million quid, I reckon, announced Eric proudly. His dad's a millionaire. He can afford to pay up. In his head, Eric was already a very successful kidnapper and a very rich, successful kidnapper at that. There would be no more eating burnt beans on stale bread for him. A future of un unimaginable riches and luxury was opening up. Gold-plated bath taps in the shape of swans. In fact, why not a gold-plated bath in the shape of a swan? He could afford anything. A big posh house, a shiny red sports car, or two parts outside, caviar and chips for tea every night. The plan was the best idea he'd ever had. Though to be honest, he hadn't had many, so it wasn't saying much. He was going to be stinking rich though. That was what, was, that was what mattered. I'm going to be stinking rich, he said, grinning broadly. Don't you mean we are going to be stinking rich? counted his money, counted his mother. Eric made a sort of grunting noise, which was meant to sound as if he was agreeing, but without actually doing so. Just concentrate on the plan, will you? He said. I might need you to help as a lookout or something. So, there he is, Eric Bumstead and his great plan to get rich by kidnapping young Finton Fedora. I wonder how that's going to work out for them. Maybe that could be a question. Will they end up kidnapping him? Will they get away with it? Well, we shall see. Okay, so chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. So if you write summary, hopefully you will have paused as we went along to write down the key ideas, or you could listen to it through all together and then listen to it again, pausing it. And then any thoughts, what you think's gonna happen. It's quite a funny story, isn't it? So I don't think things are gonna quite go to plan somehow. Anyway, year four, I'm gonna leave it for now, leave you there, so. Goodbye for now, year four.